In August of 2012, Google purchased the company Motorola Mobility for $12.5 billion. Just to put that into perspective, they purchased YouTube for a measly $1.7 billion back in 2006. A year later, Motorola, the makers of the very first smartphone, were at it again, and this time with support of the biggest tech company in the world, Google. They announced the Moto X, a cell phone that has now since revolutionized the way we look at modern smartphones. Motorola took a new approach, focusing more on the user experience versus raw horsepower and specs, and it paid off. The Moto X has now become one of the best and most popular smartphones of this year, but the company has a new trick up its sleeve, the Moto G. Normally I would go over the price of a phone after reviewing it, but in this case that wouldn't work. The Moto G is meant to be a low cost device, coming in at $180 off contract, but you might be lucky and find a carrier version for as low as $100. So throughout this entire video it is important to keep in mind the price. This phone isn't meant to be a high-end device, but the highest-end, low-end device. It is important to know what's powering your phone, because no matter how great the phone may look, if it performs poorly, it's useless. The Moto G is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 quad-core processor, Adreno 305 GPU, 1GB of RAM, 8GB of internal storage, or you can upgrade for 20 bucks more to 16GB, a 4.5 inch 1280 x 720 display coming in at 329 ppi, a 2070 mAh battery, a 5 megapixel camera with a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera. It's also a pretty small phone weighing in at 143 grams. This is a very capable processing package. I never would have thought that this phone would run so well. Everything you throw at it, it handles, with little or no slowdowns. It's notable to say though that this phone can go the distance. The 2070 mAh battery may not be the largest, but with a smaller screen and lower powered processor, this phone will easily last you the entire day. It even outlasts my Nexus 5 10 times out of 10, so if you're worried about battery life, don't be. The display is crisp and sharp, having very good contrast in colors. I was extremely surprised that a phone of this price range could produce such stunning visuals. This display actually has more pixels per inch than the iPhone 5S, which costs three times as much as the Moto G. To put it simply, this would have been a top of the line phone one and a half years ago. But if you've seen the Moto X, one can say that that phone has the specs of a flagship from last year. And even now, the phone runs like butter. Motorola has done some great work optimizing their new phones, making the Moto G software run silky smooth on the latest version of Android. The software on the Moto G is top notch. Running the current version of Android 4.4.2 KitKat, an already great phone, gets even better. With a superb UI and buttery smooth performance, the Moto G is a device that truly delivers a beautiful Android experience. The design is one of the key and main elements in this phone. KitKat introduces a much more cleaner, simplistic look with the use of transparency and a mix of colors that bring out the nice visuals. Stock apps are also updated to this new style. Compared to previous versions of Android, KitKat is extremely memory efficient, and despite having only 1GB of RAM on the Moto G, Motorola has really worked their magic as the RAM usage is surprisingly low even while having an impressive amount of apps running in the background. These optimizations made for the G really show off on the overall performance of the phone. Not only that, but with the choice of either the 8GB or the 16GB model of the phone, Motorola offers free 50GB of Google Drive cloud storage for 2 years which is definitely a major advantage exclusive to the Moto G and X. Capturing beautiful moments has evolved since the advancement in mobile camera technologies and with the Moto G camera all I can say is you know it's definitely not the highlight of the phone so basically you're not going to be buying this phone specifically for the camera but don't get me wrong for the price the camera is pretty average so while testing this camera I have to say the user interface definitely takes a learning curve for instance, just tapping the screen takes a picture, and I'm sure that doesn't seem like a big deal, but honestly, when you're used to hitting a dedicated shutter button to take a picture, it just messes everything up. So I sort of had to forget everything I knew about taking photos on a smartphone just to be able to use this camera. Now one thing that stood out to me while using this camera is the amazing depth of field, at least while in close-up shots. So if you're into artistic looking shots with the foreground focus and the background blurred, this camera sort of gets the job done. I tried out the panorama feature and it works just like any other panorama feature on a camera as well as with the HDR mode. Now on the topic of modes, I really like the burst mode feature which allows you to take a plethora of photos just by holding your finger down on the screen. 
but don't be fooled this doesn't anyway change your shutter speed settings and speaking of settings on the Moto G you're not really given any camera settings to tweak so if you wanted to mess with your contrast or your brightness or your aperture or your shutter speed you're not really given the option to. Although there is a photo editor, not to say it's pretty nifty, all the effects that you can do, and you can adjust your brightness and contrast. Low light is this camera's kryptonite, it's weakness, so as you can see, you definitely want to use this camera where it's not dark, and also you want to stray away from using the digital zooms. Shooting at 720p, 30 frames per second, you get some smooth, vivid images, but not only that, but some pretty decent sounding audio. Here's an example. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I'm only one, one foot away from the camera right now. And this is just to give you an idea of how the audio sounds. So in all, the camera isn't really the highlight of the device, but it more so complements the phone. You know, it's a cheap phone with a pretty good camera, but do expect for the pictures to come out pretty crisp and clear. So if Tiger Woods had this camera, I'm sure he would say, this camera is no birdie or eagle, but it's definitely par. To wrap things up, the Moto G is like that shy person who never talks but can sing amazingly. You know, it's just something you really wouldn't expect. So with a nice design, a pretty quick processor, runs the latest version of Android 4.4 KitKat like butter, a pretty decent camera, and to top that, doesn't cost more than $250. Really all I can say, you know, Google took a beast phone, the Moto X, and essentially made it into a cheaper beast phone without really compromising the specs too much with the exception of the camera just a little bit and all in all they did a really good job doing it so hats off to Google for that. On January 29th, 2014, Google officially announced that it was selling the company Motorola Mobility to Lenovo for $2.91 billion. Now the question is, how is this going to impact their current flagships like the Moto X and Moto G? Well the answer is, only time will tell. So make sure you stay subscribed to this channel, or subscribe if you haven't already, to be up to date on all of our future videos that are coming out. And make sure you check out Tony and Jane's channel for, you know, their part in this video. And that's pretty much it, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.